Hello and welcome back. We know now how to create a table, how to use data types in the table, and how to sort and filter the data in a table. So the first thing I'm going to do today is to create a new table. So I'll click on create table design and I'm going to create a table called courses. So I will start with courses ID. Data type will be an auto number. So I'll press A from the keyboard. Tab and then press again tab and I will write here course name and go to the data type field and here what I will do in this area I will just change the caption to course name like this with a space okay this will be short text and I'll press the tab key and I will write here course duration again short text and here I will write in the caption area course space duration okay press enter now I will write here course fees. Press the tab key and here I will take currency. All right, press the tab key and here in the caption I will put a space again course fees. So my table is now let's say ready. I'll save this. And I'll call it course T. You could have also used TBL course, but we'll keep going with this because it's consistent with what we did with the first table. So, okay. There is no primary key. So, we'll say, okay, you assign it. And of course, it will take course ID, which is the auto number. All right. So, let me just close this. And if I click on course T and right click and open it in design view, you will see that the primary key has been assigned to course ID. So I'll right click on this and look at it in the data sheet view. Okay. Can expand this a little bit like this. Okay. Now I'm going to enter two course names. So I will call this animations. Course duration, let's say three years. Course fees, 30,000. Robotics. Again, three years. And we'll charge 45,000 for this. So we have now two courses. So we'll close this. And we will go to the database tools. There is actually no relationship. All right. If you see here, we have the details of the student. And here we have the details of the course but there is no relation there is no connection between the tables so we are going to right click and close this or we can click here and close all right now if i do a query of the table student table for example i'll go to create design query you will get this something like this with both the tables so if you click on student and you add and then you click on course and add close this so you have in your query both the tables i'm now going to adjust this a little bit so we can see the grid also so i'm going to click and drag this area and you see there is a grid here 
with field, table, sort, show, and so on. Now, I'm going to bring the ID here by just double clicking on it. Then the first name, when I double click, it will come here. Then the last name. Okay. And now I'm going to click on the course name. And it has come here. Do you notice that? So I have the student ID, first name, last name, and course. When I run this query, something very strange happens. Do you notice that? For example, if I have two courses, then jo Jacob Johnson is reflected twice and he has taken the course twice. That means he has taken animations and also robotics. Okay, I'm going to close this and I'm not going to save this. Okay, close. Do you want to save changes? No. However, if you now go to create query and just select student table, let me just drag this so that you can see the grid. If I now double click on the first name, last name, and let's say I want to have the emails of all the students, I double click on this. Now, if I run the query, you can see that I have got the emails of the students with the first name and the last name. So, this is what a query actually does. We can save this query. So, we can right click on this, save, and we can call it student email Q for query. Okay, and I'm just putting underscores. So, okay. Now, I'm going to close this. I will open the students table and go to the design view. And I will add, for example, course here. And I can take this as a number if I wish. And then I can do something like this. I can say lookup wizard. Okay. Then this wizard creates a lookup field which displays a list of values you can choose from. How do you want your lookup field to get its value? So we will take the table. We will take the course table and from there we will get our values. So we will say next. And now we have choices between these two tables and obviously we are going to select course, tables, we'll go to next and we can select course ID also if you wish. So we will take this here and the course name. Okay. And we'll say next. We will sort the course ID or even the name if you want in ascending order. We'll go to next and here you see automatically access gives you the two names and how wide would you like the columns to be and so on. So you can even see the key column. Instead of saying hide, we can see the key column. So I'll just click on this and let us see both. Okay. So next, and when you select a row in the lookup field, you can store a value from that row in your database, or you can use the value later to perform an action. Choose a field that uniquely identifies the rows. Which column in your lookup field contains the value you want to store or use in your database? Course ID is better, you will see for the relation between the student ID and the course ID. Okay, we'll take course ID now. Go to next. And with what label would you like for your lookup field? We have course, so we'll keep it course. 
and we leave this as it is and we will finish. So the table must be saved before relationships can be created. Save now? Yes. So we have saved this and we have an extra field course and it is also it can also be linked now to the student table or rather we can link the student and the course table now. We will see this in a moment. So we will go to the database tools. We will go to relationships and there you see because I had selected course ID and put course as a number in student T there is a relation. So let me click on this right click on this and edit the relationship and you can see the relationship is one too many. I will enforce their efficient integrity. You will see later on. We will explain this later on. And okay. Because now the student T table is open. It won't do that. So I will just cancel this. And we will close the student table. We will click again on this. Right click. Edit relationship. Enforce referential integrity. And okay. All right, and the relationship is one too many. That means this course can be taken by many students. Okay, and now I'm going to do the query that I was doing earlier. All right, so we will close this. Now I will go to the student table, double click on it, and we will fill in some data here. Okay, so for the course, I will click here, and you can see. Because of the lookup field or the lookup property, I can click here and I can see here that one is animations and two is robotics. So I'll click here. So if you had more, you would get those numbers. So I'll say one. In this case, also I'll say one. Let's say two now. and one okay so we have this i'm going to close this now and i will again create a query in the design mode i need to select the tables from which i want a query i'll select both by pressing control and then saying add so we'll go to the student id first name last name and we will double click on course name so there it has come and let's run the query and you can see here, because of the relationship between the two tables, we get some wonderful information. We know exactly which student has taken what course. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create a form based on this relationship. And you will see how relationship help us to create very interesting objects in Microsoft Access. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.